Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we're going to play with Firestore and Transactions. So why do we why do we want to play with Firestore and Transactions? That is because at some point when you start to update and create all of your cool Firestore documents, then at some point it will become very, very slow. And that's because you are updating thousands of documents and you're probably doing it one by one. And that is where the Firestore transactions comes in. It's so easy to use. So uh, first of all, this is my Mike's demo 2023 project right here. And I have gone to, yeah, I'm just using the Google Cloud as usual um, for these Google uh, demos, right? Especially for Firestore. So then you just write Firestore right here. Uh, and then you can go to your Firestore uh, then area in your Google Clouds. And the default database is named the default. So of course, you can also create your own database if you want to. Uh, as usual, be mindful of the pricing. Uh, I've, I think that the Firestore is not that expensive, actually. When I've never been uh, surprised uh, when when I've been playing around and making demos for Firestore, at least. So, um, yeah, so that's good. Uh, first of all, let us delete this collection. I've, I have a collection that is named Mike's Aliens. Let us just delete them because we want to start. I want to show you how to create this, actually. So I will say Mike's Aliens right here. Delete collection. And then, of course, we have to write the name just to make sure that we did not uh, mistype or mispress something with our choppy fingers. So now we're deleting the collection. So let's go to the code, actually. Um, let us just go directly to to the code, which is right here. So in my situation, I found uh, I found a lot of random names. There was a random na name generator uh, out there somewhere. Then I generated how many names? 444 or 443 um, random names right here like harris and barry and etc 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 we're going to create aliens from all of these names right here so that means that we have 444 um, documents that we want to create uh, and be, also be mindful that when you create your documents they can maximum be one megabyte uh, large so that means that if you're larger than that then you have to split up your document you have to make references inside your document but that is for another video i will show that it's, it's it's not difficult at all uh, just to, just be mindful for it firestore is awesome for data for for document data that is not that is less than one megabyte <laughs> long and that's actually most of the data when we are playing when we are making apps and at least small apps and stuff like that then so but uh, and it's not, it's not just for apps, it's also for inter integration purposes, uh, yeah, holding states for for your integration applications. Um, yeah, the use case for the Firestore database uh, are many. Uh, but uh, for this video right here, we're going to look at the, we're going to look at the transactions. Uh, so I have created this project. This is, I'm using PyCharm, which uh, I definitely think, think this is the best uh, IDE for Python. Um, so if you are used to VS Code, then try uh, yeah try PyCharm out. It's I just I just feel it's much easier. If I want to go see the interpreter and I create a virtual environment, then I just press Control Alt S and I can go to my Python interpreter right here. I can I add a new interpreter if I want to, and if I say local interpreter, then I can choose Conda system and or Conda virtual in virtual in in is, is the easiest one to uh, yeah. To deal with, so just choose that. If you don't know Conda, just choose virtual in. It, it's uh, faster and it's uh, easier. Then you create a requirements.txt file right here, and you just dump down you know, all of your uh, requirements and your dependencies right here. Actually, I only needed the uh, Google Cloud Firestore for this uh, demo right here. I just like I just like these libraries right here, and also I would like to make some demos on how to extract data from. Uh, yeah, from databases and that can and then Trino is, is a very good choice. Uh, but that is for other videos. So let us go back and try to keep uh, let us try to keep, keep focus on the problem right here. I want to create some documents. I have uh, I have placed my aliens in the static data file right here. And um, and this is my Python code right here. I'm running it for my main down here. So if name equal to main, then run this code that we have up here. That means that this function will be run. And uh, the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a Firestore client. And um, we have a project name declared up here. The reason why I've done this is because then if you want to play around with your own uh, project and your own collection, then of course you can just change these variables up here and then, then you're up and running in no time. You need to do one thing before you actually start uh, running this code and that is you need to have to log in. So you have to, um, so you have to log in to your, you have to log into G Cloud. So that means you have to log in right here. 
like this gcloud auth application default login and then you will get your browser and then your browser will be started will, will start up and then you will have to log in with your google uh, cloud accounts and when you're done with that then you are ready to run the code because then this code will run under your uh, security context then after that of course you can also use service accounts and a lot of yeah, as usual but you have just have to set it up then you have to dump a service account uh, file, a JSON file somewhere, and then you have to point uh, to it with in environment variables, or you can also point to it in your code uh, yeah, itself. That, that is definitely up to you. Um, this video is not about that, so I will not, I will show, I will not show that, that to you in this video. Um, so what we need to do is usually when you have the, all of these aliens, if you did not know about transactions, then you would just create one document one at a time. You would say, Get, get me, give me the collection, give me the document like this, and, of, and you will have a document key. That is how the Firestore works. You need to have a document key, and, and in there you will have to, uh, some data. The, I'm creating the document key from the alien name, then I'm just uh, replacing any spaces with uh, with nothing. So that means that then I will get a key like, um, like Parsons Gomez without the space right there. That is one key, for instance. Uh, and then, uh, then I will get a document like that. Uh, and when I have that document, then I can choose to run an operation on the transaction. So instead of running a direct uh, operation on the document, so you, usually you might be uh, used to running a FS, uh, a Firestore document.set or something like that. But when you're dealing with transactions, then you have to, of course, then you have to call your uh, functions on your transactions instead. So, so here I'm creating a transaction. In the end, when I'm almost done, then I'm committing my transaction. It's important to commit your transaction. If you have uh, too much data, then you are then your transaction will also fail. Then you will you can both get a timeout, and the size also needs to be less than ten megabyte. So the size of your transaction needs to be less than ten megabyte, and the time that it takes to send this to uh, to the Google API is also limited. So if you get some timeouts or something like that, then lower the amount of data that you're placing in each t transaction. I would say a good, a good number. If you if you if you comment if you if you, if you find trouble, then uh, then set your transaction number to eight thousand. It's just a magic number that I that I have. Uh, um, so that is just a good number to start with. Of course, you can always increase if you want to uh, tweak the, the, your your runs and your your batch jobs. Um, but definitely, the, the transaction definitely help. It will take a long time to um, to create eight thousand documents. Uh, but with transactions, it's quite easy, actually. So when you are doing the transactions, you have multiple options. You can use set, like I have right here. You can use update, and you can use create. If you don't know whether your document is already there, then set is a good choice, and then you can set the merge to true in the end. That means that if you, if there's already a document named that, then it will take the data that you have inside your document. So this is this is just a dictionary. So this is a... Um, is, this is just a... A Python dictionary that I have right here. You can see I have alien name, so I could actually use multiple lines if I wanted to. And we can have the merge on the last name on the last line line right here. So this is our object. We have a house color, and that is a list. So the house color is a list of colors. That that uh, that is uh, yeah that is uh, the the colors uh, of 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 the house of the alien house. And of course we will just start with adding blue. But if you add, want to add more colors uh, later on. Then we can use something called a Firestore union. There are more functions than this, um, so you can also, if you want to delete a color from all of your documents, then you can also easily do that with uh, with the set uh, function right here. It's just to show you that you do not have to extract each document, manipulate it, and then store it afterwards. You can actually just run these set commands where you can uh, where you can use these uh, functions like like Firestore array union like this, and then you can actually add data to existing documents already. You you don't have to. Um, yeah, usually if you have a normal relational database, then you would actually take out your row, then you would uh, yeah find some values, and maybe you would add uh, you you'll find you will find the house colors, and then you would add blue to the list, and then um, and then you would add that, or maybe you would have organized your relational database so smart that you could actually have a house color table and then you could just add that uh, new color into the table and then have a reference to the uh, to the alien so that is how the, the relational databases work when you're dealing with these document databases right here they are they are they're really really fast these document databases but uh, um, of course when you when, when you fetch the information on the document key if you want to join data then 
That is no, that is no fun with document uh, data. But that again, again, that is another story. Then you want to use relational databases instead. If you want to, if you have a lot of different uh, data sources that you want to join, then use relational databases. It is also possible with Firestore. You, you can just, um, but of course, you need to know what you look for, and the document key is very important. So you need to when you you need to think about your uh, organization. You need to uh, think about your key. What how how to fetch the data? You have to look up your data with uh, yeah, we'll put some key right here. In in, the, in this situation right here, uh, we are storing. This is a document that we want to uh, call the set function on, and this is the data that we want to. Um, Add and in this situation right here, we want to add the list blue. So that means that if, if we already had orange, black, and white in the list, then you will just add blue on top of that. You will not replace the data. If you want to replace the data, then you will just skip and just just delete this. Then you would actually replace the existing data with. Um, then you just uh, then you just uh, yeah then you just re re replace all of the data with. Uh, the list that contains blue that that is that would be this code right here but we don't want to do that right now we want to uh, gently add gently we want to add a five store array we want, we want to we want to add blue to the list so if that means that now we can actually run it multiple times um, so that's quite cool okay uh, too many blank lines yeah but uh, okay so when you're dealing with python you should actually there's something called auto save save actions right here you should add um, reformer code is a good one. Sometimes it's also good to optimize your imports. Then you, if you have some imports that are not used, those will then be removed. So now when I save the file, you can see right now it's formatted accordingly to the. There's a standard for Python, so uh, it, yeah. So there's a standard that says how many how many how many new lines should there be, and uh, yeah. Okay, so let us um, so let us say that now we are ready. Uh, protein right here. Let me just see right here. Uh, that is another story. Um, yeah. So okay, let us just run the program, Mike. Let us let us see if it works. Okay. So now we run the program, and we get an error. And now we got an error. That is because this run right here in a ray union and we do not want blue we want let us try this just uh, to begin with so first we have a ray union and then we have the color yeah let me just run again let's see what happens now i'm printing out each of the names you can see how fast it went it was just really fast we just got 500 of course 400 and yeah, almost 500 names it's, it's not that much it's, it starts to become a problem when you come up to 1000 and above, then it can take a long time to store all of these documents right here. But it was, you saw it was just instantaneously, so we just got it right away. Uh, I'll go to my Firestore in the clouds. I'll go to my Firestore database, and here now I can see I have a collection, Mike's Aliens right here, and we can see that I have a house color blue. Oh yeah, that's cool. And I have another alien name here, Adam's Cash. And you can see again, you can see the the key is, is here right here, Adam's Cash, and etc. 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 It is a Nunan, Nunans, etc. etc. So that is that is awesome. But now we want to add another color, we, uh, house color. Could, we need to splash. We would like to splash in some yellow, and maybe also some orange. So now we have two more. We want to add but two more colors to 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 the alien houses. It's easy to paint in this uh, programmatic world right here. So now we are painting, 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 and it just instantaneously, it's, it's just there. Look, look how fast it is. It's incredible. It just went in and updated all of the, the, the data with house color like this. This is incredible. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you very much, Google for Firestore. I'm not paid to say that. I just really like it. I like actually like uh, most of the technology in the clouds. It's uh, it's a lot of fun to, to, to play with also all, all of the Asia resources and all of the AWS resources. Those are also fun to play around with. Um, and also all the digital ocean resources. Those are also fun to play with. Um, and that's, yeah. So that's actually, this is actually, as usual, I will place this code on my, uh, yeah, 
uh, I op openly available on my GitHub account. So just feel free to just check the, the project name Firestore Demo. Maybe I'll name it something with Python. Yeah, I, I think I'll name it something with Python also. You can just go take it there and then you can steal the code and then use it for your own examples. Um, that was tonight's video. Thank you very much for all of your comments. Um, it gives a lot of energy. And uh, have a great evening and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.